On our agenda, we have what is a variable macro, what does a variable macro look like in A to J author mode, where can I use variable macros, and the five places they can be used, and where can I learn more about variable macros. So first, what is a variable macro? It's a way to call up the value of a variable in a question text. It's a way to set the value of another variable. And it's a way to include the value of a variable in a field label. Basically, it allows the author to personalize the A to J guided interview for the end user. By using the end user's name or uh, other personal information, it draws them further into the interview. So here I've included for the end user, this is their name that they entered, and then I ask the question that I want to find out. So what does it look like in A to J author mode? So some of, you, some of you might know, here we are in the A to J authoring mode, and we're in the question tab. As you can see here, I have my variable macro right here, and the format is percent sign, percent sign, open bracket, variable name, close bracket, percent sign, percent sign. It's very important to remember when doing variable macros to include all of the words exactly as you put them in the variable itself. So capitalize where you've capitalized and order the words correctly. This is how you tell A to J what variable to use and what value to pull in for your interview. The first place to use variable macros would be in question text. So personalize it for the end user. Here again, we're in A to J author mode in the question tab, and I have a variable macro in the question text. What is, and the variable, the name of the primary agent that they've chosen previously. I'm asking what's that person's address. So you can see it here in the end user mode. What is John Doe's address? Here you also can see it in the learn more answer section. It's important to remember the difference between the question section and the answer section. Here I have it in the answer section asking that same variable, the agent primary TE, the text variable, their address is needed so that notices can be sent to them. Later we're going to talk about why it can't be used in the learn more question section, even though you see it here. The second way to use a variable macro is to set the value of another variable. I used the variable macro of the agent's name to set the value of this new variable, agent primary TE. So in this question, now we're on the advanced tab, but if you were in the question tab, you could see that I asked, which agent, or which person have you selected do you want to be your primary agent? And I gave them the option of the person they had entered for agent two's name and the person they've entered for agent one's name. So I go to the advanced tab and I create a condition. If after they select agent one, if they do that, if that's true, I want A to J author to set the value of this new variable, agent primary TE, to agent one's name. So I have again the format percent sign, percent sign, bracket, variable name, close bracket, percent sign, percent sign. If it was false and that they selected agent two, I'm told A to J to then set the variable agent primary TE to agent two TE. So now I don't have to keep asking, do you want Jane Doe's to be um, your primary agent? Or whenever I mention um, a primary agent, I can just use whatever the proper selection is. I don't have to keep saying primary agent. It reminds the end user who they've selected as that primary agent later on. Third way to use variable macros is to display the value of a variable in a field. So there's two options, radio buttons or field label. Here I've used radio buttons. This is the question I was talking about in the previous screen. Which of these people do you want to make your primary agent? Here, agent to TE um, in the variable macro format so that it displays their name, what they've selected before. Again, you can use it for um, a field label, John Smith. He was selected as the agent primary TE. Their legal powers, so they, that the end user can remember who they're specifically talking about when they're filling out these documents. Another way is in signposts. You can use a variable macros to personalize the signposts. So in the interview I created for today's training, I only had three signposts. So here we're at the end, we're in front of the courthouse, and we're ready to print our documents. But I wanted to personalize a little, little bit further for the end user. 
So I've inc included a variable macro, as you can see here, congratulations, plus their name, the client's name, plus an exclamation point. To do this, you go to the question, so this is the last question, I go to the advanced tab, and I create a condition. That's, the condition is 1 equals 1. That's always going to be true, so this is always going to show up. So if it is true, which it always will be, I want A to J author to set the variable A to J step 3, which is this signpost, to this value. So congratulations, plus a space, plus my client's name, plus an exclamation point. You can also use variable macros to determine which word should be used. So instead of repeatedly asking um, for child slash children, mother slash uh, father, husband slash wife, his slash her, you can really personalize it to the specific end user by creating a question which, which sets a new variable and then using that new variable. So in this initial question right here, we're in, again, authoring mode, advanced tabs. The question itself was, end user, how many children do you have? And I had a drop down menu of one through eight. Um, if they selected one, I told A to J author, if true, that they selected one child, to set this new variable, child or children, TE, to child. If they selected more than one child, I told A to J author to set this variable to children. So now in the future, I know what, or A to J author knows what the correct word is for this specific end user. Now I used this variable in another question. I've actually used three different variable macros in the second question, where I'm asking the end user, client first name, TE, do you want the primary agent, the person that we've selected as the primary agent, to be your children's legal guardian. So here, this variable macro knows that this end user has more than one child, so the correct word is children. If they had only selected one child, this would say child instead. Where not to use variable macros. So variable macros cannot be used in the learn more question. They can be used in the learn more answer portion though. So here, um, we talked about this a little in the beginning. This is the learn more question. Why do you need variable macros address? If you put a variable macro in the learn more question, this is how it will display for your end user. Obviously, that's not how you want it to display. You want it to display the value of that variable instead. So don't put variable macros in the learn more question section. However, it works perfectly fine in the learn more answer section. It's just a little A to J quirk, and we're working on it, but for right now, do not put variable macros in the learn more question section. Let's see them a little bit more in practice. So let me open up my A to J author. And I'm going to preview it, and I want to clear out all of the variables that I was testing before. So we start with an A to J guided interview that was designed for today's training. As they all start out generally, enter the name as the end user. And we always select the gender so that I can create, so that A to J author can create the proper avatar to follow along. Now we have the variable macro of the client's name, which is mine. So what is the name of the first person that I would like to be my agent? How about Jane Doe? What is the name of the second person? John Smith. Here it's used what I entered before as agent one and agent two to populate the radio buttons question. So let's make John Smith my primary agent. What is John Smith's address? So it knows that John Smith, A to J author, knows that John Smith is my primary agent choice before and it has um, created his name in that position. As you can see in the learn more question, that same variable macro doesn't work. But if you click onto the answer section, it works again. So it's just a reminder, you cannot use variable macros in the learn more question section. So I enter his address.
hit continue. Now again, it's using the variable macro of agent, the primary agent uh, variable in the field. It's asking what specifically powers do I want John Smith as my primary agent to have. So I want him to have all powers. And here's the question about how many children do I have? If I select one child and hit continue, it's now use the variable macro of my name as the end user. The person I've selected as my guard, as my primary uh, agent, and it knows that it's child, not children. We go back and I select five children, hit continue. It changes the variable macro to children. Now let's say we're finished. Yes, I want him to be my legal guardian for children. I'm at the end. I'm at the courthouse. We finished up. As you can see, I'm ready to print my document and my signpost has the correct end username with an exclamation point. So to learn more about variable macros, you can go to www.a2jauthor.org and find the A2J Author Guide, pages 46 and 47. You can also find the Variable Macro Training Module, which is an A2J guided interview that demonstrates the different ways to use variable macros. A quick thank you to the Center for Computer Assisted Legal Instruction for providing us with our go-to meeting services for this training.